Today we're going to go over moving averages, both simple moving averages and exponential moving averages, and how to use the indicators to improve your trading skills. We're going to go over the very basics of how moving averages work and what they are in basic terms, and then we're going to get into more advanced strategies behind these moving averages and go over several examples of how I've used moving averages in the past. Let's dive in. All right, everybody, so let's talk about these moving averages, right? There's usually a preference for either or, but I'll tell you why both work and why both are very similar. You, the derivative of where the information comes from is based on the closing prices. Now, the simple moving average just takes the closing price of how many preset days. So if you have a 20 simple moving average and you have it on the daily chart, it'll be the closing price of the last 20 days. Uh, the 50 SMA will be 50 days, so on and so forth. If you have it on a one minute chart, it'll be the closing price of the last 50 minutes, the last 20 minutes based on the settings et cetera, et cetera. So whatever time frame you have it set, it's gonna collect the closing price of the bar slash candle at each minute or hour or day or weekly, whatever time frame your actual chart is set to. Now on my screen, I have a daily chart and an hourly chart. And I'll talk about both here in just a second as to which I have, uh, which indicators on. Now, ultimately, the difference between the simple moving average and the exponential moving average is one simple thing. The exponential moving average has a multiplier on it. So it, it causes or influences the moving average to be a little bit more um, proactive, a little bit more flexible than the simple moving average. Now, it also could look a little bit more jagged on your screen, and some people would actually prefer the simple moving average because it's a little bit smoother. But all in all, when you actually line up the indicators itself, they're generally within the same range if you have the same time frame set forth on both. There may be, you know, on a daily chart, one or two point difference. You know, in the in the grand scheme of things, stocks rarely hit their actual moving average to the penny and then reject it's the specific range. But all in all, as long as you know where your moving averages are in relation to your stock price activity, it could give you a lot of guidance on really market sentiment, stock sentiment, buying opportunity, selling opportunity. Um, supportive and resistance levels, kind of the full gamut here. Now we hear we hear about things that's thrown out, in, you know, financial news. Some things like the golden cross or the death cross. And for those that don't know, the golden cross is when the 50 simple moving average average crosses above the 200 simple moving average. Now specifically, that's usually over a centered long period, long period of time. And if we look back at Target, I'll probably have to go back a few years. Maybe let's go back two years and see. You can see where uh, Target crossed below right here, crossed below and then crossed back up. The 50 simple moving average on my daily chart is gonna be highlighted by orange and the 200 day moving average is gonna be highlighted by a teal blue. So when it crosses below, it's usually a very bearish sign and that it could cause investors to start taking risk off, maybe close out their long-term positions, et cetera. And it's the same case in point when we cross above. It could you know, bring investors into the stock to go risk on. And generally, the cross up is viewed as extremely bullish. The cross down is viewed as extremely bearish. Since Target crossed over here to the upside, it was trading around 120 to 125. And as you can see, over time, as it's remained above, it's gotten as high as $268 in the near term. Now these crossover ideas are extremely important. I'll get, a, I'll get more into that in just a bit because they are tradable ideas, but certainly you know, the golden cross and the death cross is thrown out um, on TV and they talk about this, buyer beware because of the death cross, et cetera. And I just wanted to break down break that down simplistically. Now for me, the basis of moving averages really comes into twofold. Number one, guys and gals, the most important aspect is really support and resistance. 
Now, I'll talk about sentiment gauge in just a second here, but the reason why stocks tend to find support at these moving averages is due to demand. You know, it's a lot of eyes looking at that price level, and again, when stocks start crossing below these levels, below the 20 SMA, below the 50 SMA, below the 200 SMA, those are generally viewed as bearish price activity. And so we could see a risk off move take place. And obviously, if you're long the stock, that's the last thing you want to see. You want to see the stock price go up and not down. So that is going to be important because if we recognize that the stock is finding support at these levels or resistance at these levels, they could become tradable moments if you're not in or manageable moments if you are. Obviously, when you're buying and you have all these moving averages below you, you could kind of view that as a safety net. There's all these levels where you could see buyers come in to prop the stock price up before it could stop you out, etc. And it's the same thing. If you're shorting into those levels, if you start seeing that support, you may need to clear out your position because you may have actually found a bottom in the stock price. It's the same thing as well if you're long and we're below these moving averages and we find resistance. Because we found resistance, you may have to manage quickly around your positions because if it starts to reject and fall down, the fallout could be pretty severe. Now, if we look at target here, today's price action, you could see right at the 50 SMA, that orange level right there, is also coinciding with the highs of the day. Well, the high of the day um, in target today was at right around $247. $246. We're trading at $243 right now, so it's already gotten knocked back nearly $4 off of that price level. That's an important aspect because if we could recognize where support and resistance comes into play, again, we can manage through. Now let's look at BLNK today. BLNK got near their 200 simple moving average, all the way down to $34.94. The stock is now trading at $37.32. That's nearly a 8% jump off of that price level, guys and gals. That's pretty significant. It came crashing all the way down to that 200-day and bounced pretty significantly. And again, if you knew where your bottom was, you could also respectfully look at this as a buy-side opportunity or supportive thesis. And as a seller, if you're driving this price down, you knew that you had a scramble to look to take profits once it started rebounding off of that price level. So you could see the case in point here to be made for simple moving averages on your chart. Now, the second part of this is the sentiment idea. When stocks are trading above specific levels, the overall sentiment, short term, you know, intermediate term, long term, could be bullish or bearish, right? If it's above, it's generally bullish. If it's below, it's generally bearish. And you'll see the stock price respectfully showcase that. Now you could see Blink dropped and came up to the 50-day moving average and then rejected. From that moment, guys, Blink started actually trading with lower lows. And in fact, the thin gray line here is my 20 simple moving average, a short-term indicator. It rejected off that level and went down. But in the same sense, when it started to recover, it started to hold the 20 SMA. And when it got above that 50 SMA, which was previously resistance at this price level, look at how extremely bullish it got in a short period of time. Again, the market sentiment on the stock transitioned from being very bearish to bullish once the stock recovered above a critical price level, the 50 simple moving average. Now, you could gauge that the same way as the exponential moving average as well. But for me, you know, a lot of the big players like Wall Street names, right, like JP Morgan's and Goldman Sachs, and when these analysts come on TV and they talk about moving averages, they're generally referencing the simple moving average, the very basics. It's been very popular, it's widely been used for quite some time, and the exponential moving average has been as well, but it's not nearly as po uh, popular as the simple moving average. So just keep that in mind, I actually like to use a simple moving average for the longer time Time frame, especially for the daily chart. I feel it's the most significant, the most powerful at this moment, in my opinion, used or utilized on that daily chart for this specific reason. Market sentiment in the stock, price performance, price reaction, support, it really gives me a lot of structure. 
So structure partly is support and resistance and knowing your price levels. If I could tell you that you could pinpoint where stocks could potentially find bottoms and then it finds a bottom, how would you like that information? Well, it, all you have to do is rewind this video for about three minutes and you'll actually hear me talk about that. Like BLNK, it found that bottom today and it bounced. It wasn't a coincidence, ladies and gentlemen, that it happened at that 200-day simple moving average. Now, when we look at the exponential moving average, for me, while it could provide a lot of support and resistance, traders will view it in certain different lights as well. There's different metrics, right? I always hear about different types of moving averages in terms of time frame, and I encourage you folks to kind of discover what is best for you. But the most popular ones are the 9, the 20, the 50, the 100, and the 200 day. This is where my recommendations would be for the simple moving average and or the exponential moving average. In particular, the exponential moving average has been 92150-ish, I believe. I like the 92050, but I've even graduated to using a faster EMA. I use the 5, the 20, the 50. I like the 200 as a sentiment gauge as well because the 200 EMA on the hourly chart also has worked as support and resistance. Now, I talked about the crossover theory, right, with the golden cross and the death cross in this particular stock on this particular chart to the left. So let's talk about the crossover idea on the chart to the right. Now, for me, that's where the EMAs come into play greatly. They're, they're, they shift a little bit faster than the uh, simple moving averages. And more importantly, it kind of gauges the short-term sediment of the stock on a shorter-term time frame. It captures it a little bit better than the simple moving averages. Now, the crossover theory is something that I'm going to talk about in a second, but it could really be straightforward as looking for crossovers, right? And I'll talk about that here in just a second. But they also could be bounce levels or zones where the stock could bounce from. Now, for me, again, I have the 5, okay, the 20, and the 50 moving average EMA all listed right here. The 5 will be highlighted by that gold line. The 20 will be highlighted by that pink line. And that teal blue line will be the 50. Sorry, this mouse isn't the greatest. So what am I talking about crossovers? Crossovers up and crossovers down. When the faster moving average crosses above or below the slowest moving average. So in this instance, that means I'm talking about the 5 and the 50. But if you want to use the 9, that's absolutely no problem. If you use that and we see the crossovers, if it crosses over down, you have to expect bearish price activity. If it crosses up, you should look for bullish price activity. Now, some people will use a 20, a 50, and 200. Now, for me, especially on the hourly time frame, ultimately, that just is too slow. A lot of the move is already going to be made. And in particular, you're going to be noticing that you're chasing more than you're getting in early. And you're going to find lesser reward and higher risk values. And it's not a great combination. So here's a prime example of what I'm talking about. Apple, as you can see, crossed over down. My faster moving averages, the 5 and the 20, are below that blue line right here. So it indicated to me that the stock price action is bearish. We should expect the price to move lower. If you were looking to be a short seller when the moving averages both cross below that 50, so not only just the 5, right, but we need the 20 to cross below as a qualifier as well, that would be an indication that you should be looking to short. You could actually short once that 20 crosses below. As it starts to cross back up, you would look to either exit your position or potentially reverse your position. Again, with the 5 EMA crossing above the 50 along with the 20 EMA, that's giving a bullish stance. Now, again, let me just bring this back here. The EMAs and the simple moving averages are tracking the closing price of the stock over the set period, 5, 20, and 50. And if you actually start seeing the price performance, you know, 
being better than the baseline average, right? The longer term average. It's telling us that the interest in the stock is picking up on the buy side. And more importantly, the price action is actually reflecting that sentiment. And if you're recognizing that bullish sentiment is in play, you could get in early enough to take advantage of the move. So if you take a look here at Apple, we crossed up to that upside. We actually had two days of price action within the same price range, and that was around 150 to 151. Well, five days later, Apple traded as high as $165. Now, if you wish to hold on as it crossed over down, that crossed over around the $159 price. So imagine if you're in at 151, out at 159, and it only took you a week. That's a hell of a return. So guys and gals, if you really want to keep it as straightforward as that, I mean, again, trading doesn't have to be complicated. That's the purpose of us teaching you this. It's really the process of information that's going to give you that guidance on how you should trade. People are like, I don't know where to close. I don't know when to take profits. Usually when stocks start to spike aggressively or you have big gains in a short period of time, you should look to take some profits. You don't have to take all of it, but you should look to manage through your position. And again, the early indication of the five crossing below the 20, again, it's underperforming a longer term average. That's an early indication that we're going to see retraction in the stock. That could also be a indicator for you to start taking some risk off the table. But if we could tell you to buy low and sell high, just like crossover trades will, this is a beautiful, beautiful type of idea in terms of trading, trading methodology, and it's as straightforward as it gets. And again, as we cross over up, you could be look to be a buyer. If you did it today, get in at 161, all of a sudden Apple traded as high as 164s, three point, three point move in one particular day. I'm sure most people will be extremely happy if they were on the correct side of that trade. And that's the beauty of recognizing these crossovers. Now, again, they are a lagging indicator, and people say, I don't trust lagging indicators. Guys, it's a process of information based on historical values, and it's always going to be like that with the majority of indicators. There is no future fortune-telling crystal ball uh, indicator out there. We could only know what happens in the now, what happened previously, and gauge the opportunity and idea against that reference. I mean, I'm going to be quite honest with you, even quants are looking at inflows now and then making that decisive decision. But ultimately, quants create HFTs that could pick up on this information and execute trades a lot faster than humans can. Us as humans, truthfully, we don't need to be as fast as a quant. We're not going to take a million trades like these firms are. We're going to take one trade, and if we're going to take one trade, let's make it a good one. And whether it's a lagging indicator or not, if you need help understanding when buyers are coming in and then buyers are exiting, this is as straightforward as it gets. Again, buy low, sell high. If that sounds good to you, this crossover idea is going to be exceptional for you as well. Now, I also will recommend this on shorter time frames. You could look at this on a five-minute chart and look to day trade. As you could see, Apple in pre-market action was crossed over down. But early on, it started to cross over up. From that moment, guys, it is still exploding to the upside. And in fact, it came back and bounced and made new highs. Now that it's crossed over down, you can start looking to take profits. In the same sense as well, if you guys are looking at swing trades, remember I highlighted that these moving averages can be support and resistance. Now, when we talk about EMAs, they too can react as critical price levels, just like simple moving averages. Now for me, the most solid and significant support level is going to be a derivative of the daily chart, the indicators that are going to be presented at the price levels on a daily chart. But that doesn't mean that shorter time intervals don't provide support and resistance as well. When we look at Apple here on the hourly chart, if you notice on this ascension up, look at where Apple was finding support. If you notice, there was three different times as it was stair stepping up that it bounced off that pink line. And in the vast majority as it was holding strong, 
you could see that they would even hold the gold line initially as it started breaking and turboing out to the upside. And when it starts to lose these price levels, guys, you could see how bearish things can get. Again, if this is making sense, you basically took 10 minutes out of your day to really, really teach yourself what the crossover theory and the importance of these exponential moving averages can be to your trading career. I hate to say it, guys, but the days of good old stock picking just don't carry as much weight as it used to. This is a technically driven market, both from a computerized standpoint and from a charting perspective. More and more people are gravitating toward charts, chart patterns, chart indicators. Uh, even quants are using indicator levels. Even institutions are using indicator levels. And it's okay. It's okay that if you traded one way for decades that you can learn to add on to something here. Or if you're starting out anew and don't have much knowledge, take this very basic and simplistic approach because this basic and simplistic approach technically is using a algorithm. The algorithm is a compilation of data to come through a process that you really come to a specific answer, right? And for me, the crossover theory we could pull up on any stock, let's pull up NVIDIA, plays a significant role. Now, when stocks are herky-jerky like this, it's never a great time to trade, honestly. We always want to look for, in my opinion, big reversals that come from downtrends to uptrends. That is the beauty of the crossover idea. So let's take a look at Tesla here, right? NVIDIA is a great example of what I don't want to see in an EMA chart but Tesla will be more inclined of what I would love to see. Now, I'm actually going to stretch out this time frame to 30 days, and you can kind of see the process of information here. You can see that Tesla crossed over way back here, and that was at $840, and still remained bullish up to $1,250 until the cross down at $1,200. From that crossover down at $1,200, guys and gals, you could see that Tesla ended up actually free falling all the way down to $980 until it started to cross up again right around that 1030 level. Well, within just one week, it went from 1030 to 1200. So imagine you could get into Tesla from 800 to 1250, let it go or short from 1200 to 980, get back in at 1030 and ride it up to 1200 all within the last month. Sounds good to me. Again, straightforward, simplistic, pretty easy to use. Let's look at another name, Lucid. Lucid, probably a little bit more difficult, but you could see that it crossed back up here, right? It crossed down just for a brief second, but really got right back up. And then again, crossed over back down, crossed over back up, and rode the pony all the way here. So this was buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell. And if you notice, this is lower than that, which was lower than that, which was lower than that. So buy low, sell high, buy low, sell high, buy low, sell high. If you could just stay disciplined and not try to jump the gun, and more importantly, look for strong trends up and down, you could take full-on advantage, ladies and gentlemen, of this theory. CRM is another prime example as well. Now, if we look back on CRM, you could see that we crossed back up here, rolled the wave, and then you'd be exited here. Small crossover buy, small crossover sell, and if you shorted the stock, it dumped down to this level. Now, it actually did rebound and cross over and came back down. So this, at best, would have been a scratch trade, maybe a small loss. But all in all, you could see how to take full advantage of the actual trends and swings. Now, if you look at CRM on the daily chart, as it started to rise up, it started holding the 20 simple moving average as support. Really, it started from 265 and rode this pony all the way up to 311. And then it started to break below that price level. And the moment that it broke through support, you could see that the fallout was very significant in a very short period of time. And that kind of coincides with what the heck was happening here in the near term. 
that break was at around 303, 304. And guys, if you notice, that's right where we started crossovering down to the downside, right around 303, 304, even a little bit earlier. So seeing that nonsense, seeing that, you know, respective simple moving average breach support is no longer in play, plus the crossover down, that kind of gave us a bearish sign on two different charts and two different time frames with respectfully two different indicators. You see how powerful that information can be? Now let's take a look at Apple. We were talking about Apple here just a second ago and how bullish it was. So we can see Apple here on the hourly chart and now Apple on the daily chart. Apple in itself was finding a lot of support and started to cross over right around this 149, 150 price. Well, if you take a look here at Apple, Apple was near the 50 day moving average and bounced and then started holding the 20 simple moving average. That bounce happened to coincide with that crossover. So we found pretty strong technical support at that 50 simple moving average. And then we got the bullish crossover sign on that EMA. So you see the process of information here, right? We used information from one different indicator on one different time frame and cross reference that with a, another indicator on a different time frame. And we're starting to see what I would say suggestively two bullish signs, technical support at a very critical price level, the 50 simple moving average, the crossover bullish sign that we saw after it crossed over and started to extend down. And that crossover extend down hit that 50 simple moving average and caused the EMAs to cross back up, which is again, we're saying bullish sentiment, right? Price performance is bullish near term. And if we coincide that with, well, that's because it hit the 50 simple moving average and bounced off that level like a trampoline. Well, you could have taken advantage of the situation. You could have gotten in at around 150 to 151 and again, rolled that pony as it started breaking out to 165.70. This is what's really important. It's the process of information. Now you may say, what does a simple moving average support mean to me? This is how I would view it. Support should be viewed as a bullish sign, that the stock is finding a floor, that it's not allowed to go any lower. Now what happens if it does go lower? Well, your whole thesis of wanting to buy the stock, out the window. Do you see how that works? And that also means that instead of buying in at that moment and getting trapped like a lot of buyers were, you process that information and say, wait a second, maybe I should be patient here. The whole reason why I want to buy is no longer there. So then why do I want to buy? Oh, because I like Apple? Well, everybody loves Apple. But remember, trading is about timing. We're not talking about investing. If you're investing, you can buy at any time and then look at it two years later and say, yeah, yeah I did all right. But as traders, precision does matter. Timing does matter. And if you could, you know, really give yourself a true validated reason to be a buyer, as opposed to saying, I want to buy just because, that gives you also a lot more conviction, but a lot more reason to be involved in that stock. Does that make sense, everybody? Because if you're buying just to buy, you could get trapped up. And then next thing you know, the stock price collapses and you're left holding the bag and then you're wondering what to do. And then you end up selling on the lows and the stock rallies and you're like, what the heck? But now we have structure, we have an idea. More importantly, you could, you could plan around these trades. You could say, look, this is a low risk, high reward scenario in one of my favorite stocks. Well, heck, now's the time to buy. It's kind of using the common sense theory with basic charting knowledge. And if we have basic charting knowledge, folks, that already puts you at like that 90% threshold where you're ahead of the markets. It really can make you a very dangerous trader in a good way. Not so much that you're in a danger to yourself, but more than anything, it could really start cleaning up a lot of your trade ideas. It could, you'll, you'll start noticing that you're getting on the right side of the market more. You're getting better winners you're cutting your losers faster. If that sounds good to you guys and gals, maybe, just maybe, it's time to use these moving averages. And if you are right now, if you already are, but you're not viewing these moving averages in this way, train your mind. 
right? Support and resistance, reactive behavior off of these levels. These are telling moments. People are always suggestively saying, look, I subscribe to a dark pool so I know when big money is buying. No, you only know when a big money is buying if they actually put orders in the dark pool. But generally speaking, you know, JP Morgan, Citibank, Morgan Stanley, they have floor traders out there that are out there just trading. They're out there trading. Now, are they executing orders for their clients? Of course, but they're out there trading. And guess what? They look at these price levels as well. They look for these opportunities. Now, they may not use exponential moving average crossovers, but they'll know where the 50 simple moving average is and they'll see how that stock reacts or they'll look to initiate their trades at those levels. And if we could start spotting the market, especially the market sentiment, switching at a price level that we are watching along with others, well, like I said before, you're left with two choices. Either take the trade or you don't. But again, if we see the bullish thesis, if we see that reaction, and we don't take that trade, then what are we waiting for, guys? There's no major flashing sign that's going to come on your screen that says, buy me, I'm going to be a winner. It is up to us to process that information. It is up to us to gain experience and knowledge, right? Or gain experience with that knowledge and see this occur. Because it doesn't matter if it's Apple, it doesn't matter if it's Amazon. This will reoccur on a daily basis. It may not be with the same stock, but again, I tell my clients, rinse, wash, repeat. I mean, traders are creatures of old, you know, old habits. If something works for them, why are they gonna change? If they're making money from one thing, they're not gonna be like, oh, this isn't working, I get something better. They have something better. And I'm not saying you folks need some crazy algorithm to learn how to trade or to be successful. Keep it simple. This is one way to keep it simple. And if crossover theory is over your head, guys, watch this video again. It'll start to click. It's as simple as saying, this orange line is above the blue line, I should be looking to buy. This orange line is below the blue line, I should be looking to sell. I mean, that's about as straightforward as it gets. And if you look at, oh, Apple at the 50. Oh, it's holding and turning up. Oh, I see a crossover. And then now all of a sudden you're like, I should be a buyer. The light bulb just went off in your head. That's the beauty of using and utilizing both indicators. Now, I don't blame you if you have, you know, only one screen and you, you're working in your nine to five and it's like, ah, it's really hard to have both. I just need to have one. Sure, that's fine. Like I said, whether you just use the simple moving averages or you just cross relate to the EMAs, it doesn't matter. What matters is price action. What matters is historical reference and it repeating over and over again. And more importantly, what really matters is the timing factor. Guys, if you could center this all down, which is very simple to do, you could find plenty of opportunities throughout the trading week, throughout the trading month, that's gonna put you in a incredible position of success. It does require a little bit of patience, a lot of discipline, and certainly some aggression. But if you could combine that with the very basics, you're gonna find yourself on the correct side of the market way more times than not. And as a trader, that is all we could ask for. Charles Moon here, the stock strategist for Prosper Trading Academy. Do me a favor, if you happen to like this video, smash that thumbs up button, click on subscribe, click on the notification bell so that you don't miss any future videos from us. Do me a favor, comment down below what you did like, what you didn't like, what you wanna learn. We'll be more than happy to answer and provide future videos on what you suggest. Peace and love, everybody.